Hello everyone, welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. So I am back in the beautiful sunshine state of California. If you guys recall the last time I was here, I came to check out the Sling TSI and unfortunately the weather was poopy. So today I am back. I flew all the way out here because we need to fly that airplane behind me. Personally, I'm super excited because this is one of the first experimental airplanes that I checked out couple of years back well it was a different version of it which was the sling 4 but this new beefed up version we're gonna go up fly in a true cross country okay and we're gonna check out the actual numbers real life numbers so this is not me making some estimation or giving my opinion on the airplane you guys are going to see for yourself just how well this airplane flies what the performance numbers are and get this just to test it real well we're gonna go up to Big Bear Okay, Big Bear, for those of you who are not familiar, it's a mountainous, nice mountainous area, okay? The field elevation there is about 6,000, 7,000 feet. On a nice day, you might get density altitude up to 8,000 feet, okay? So that would give us the opportunity to test the turbocharger in this uh, Rotax 915 engine. All right, I've said too much already. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Okay, so guys, here we are. Um, uh, I'm here with Wayne. So it's gonna be three of us flying today, Wayne and John, and we're gonna load this thing up pretty good. All right, it's gonna be three full grown men, and we're gonna put some load back there because I want us to load this thing up to the max and go out like we're going for a cross country flight. Now our flight plan for today, uh, Big Bear from here is about 76 miles or so. So that's decent uh, enough to, to test this thing in its full length. Yeah, just turn the key in for the start. Something like that. We've got oil pressure, we good. So that they can pull off, let's just release the brake. For this flight guys, I will be at the controls and John will handle the radio calls. Also for this flight, I will be very observant and I will try as much as possible to break down all the performance numbers. Now during our taxi for the Sling TSI, you have a direct no steering, which means that you basically control left and right movement on the ground with your rudder pedals. And if you're not used to this, it's actually quite nice. Uh, that means you don't have to, you know, step on the brake as often as you normally would with the cash and free nose gear. And also with the TSI, you have a handbrake uh, as compared to a tow brake that you find in a lot of single engine airplanes. Let's start with our run up here. And this is the first time I want to properly introduce the FADEX system on the Rotax 915 engine. Normally, when you do a run-up, you have to do quite a few things just to check your mags. You want to check all your cylinders, make sure all of the oil temperatures and your screen is showing green. And the great thing about having a FADEX system, for example, in a normal single engine airplane with constant speed prop, you have to pull mixture back and then you got to check your mags by switching the ignition back and forth. In the Sling TSI, you only hit buttons, okay? You hit buttons and you hit switches. You don't have to mess with any lever. Your prop switch is right there. Your mag switch, you just hit up and down. You check your screen, make sure everything is in the green and you're good to go. Wind straight on the runway, so it's all going to be good. Okay, when you're ready, dial in that power. So both doors are closed. She's done. We good. Let's okay. rock and roll. Here we go. Good. Enjoy. Okay, we're full power. We've got 
Thomas Bridge would like to come in. Uh, Let's go fly. On takeoff, you can start your lift off at 55 to 60 knots. Now, on this day, I took off around 60 knots and almost immediately did I feel the speed of this airplane. And once we started climbing, I saw between 800 and 1,000 feet per minute. Now, as we climb, let's talk about that engine once again. See, with the Rotax 915, you also have a turbocharger. Now, if many of you recall, when I flew the Sling 4, which is the predecessor of this airplane, when I flew that a couple of years ago, on the climb out, we had to manage the turbocharger on the engine, which meant on takeoff, we put the turbo, we activate the turbo, and then after climb for, I believe, you, you set it for about five minutes and then after five minutes you have to pull that turbo back that way your engine doesn't overheat. But with the Rotax 915, your turbo is readily available at any point in flight, okay? Throughout our climb, even during cruise, I didn't have to manage the turbocharger, it was just there. So once again, that FADIC system doing its job. For my viewers who don't understand what a FADIC system is, think of it as a computer that manages all of your engine function. It's a technology that's already readily available in the automotive industry. Take for example, whenever you're driving your car, you don't have to manually pump fuel in and out of your engine, you don't have to manually manage a turbocharger, nothing. All you do is put your feet to the pedal and drive. The same concept here. What this FADIC does for you is that it takes all of that manual labor away. So as a pilot, all you're doing is focusing on flying the airplane. Now let's get back to the flight. The Sling TSI is a light airplane, even for a four-seater, and that's why it's able to pull and push all of this performance with a tiny engine. If I were to describe the behavior of this airplane, the first thing you'll notice is that it is light, but it is also very stable. Okay, for me personally, when I think of a light airplane, I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna get tossed around, uh, it's gonna be too glitchy on the controls if I need to turn this way or that way. But with the Sling TSI, it was completely balanced. On this day, the weather was fairly nice, but we still had some bumps. Anytime you travel around mountains in Los Angeles, you will get some bumps. But the Sling TSI handled everything just fine. Now the highlight reel, let's talk some numbers. I want us to focus on two things to start. First, the power input and the fuel flow. I say that because your airspeed or the speed that you're traveling will always be relative to the air that you're traveling in and the temperature outside. So your speed will always change depending on what the weather is doing. Now the two constant that I saw throughout this flight was at full power, I was burning on average 10 gallons of fuel per hour. And every time I pull that power back to eco mode, I was burning on average 8 gallons per hour. This was consistent through the whole flight. At full power, 8 to 9,000 feet, I was seeing close to 200 miles per hour. Now granted, we had some good tailwinds behind us. This is still shocking to me. At close to 200 miles per hour, I'm still burning less than 10 gallons of fuel per hour. Whenever I pull the power back, I would lose about 10 to 15 knots, but I'm also saving two gallons of fuel per hour.
the actual numbers on the screen true airspeed I was seeing 149 to 162 163 knots my ground speed I was seeing over 170 knots for my non-pilot viewers let's break these speeds down so in an airplane you typically would have three different speeds you have your true airspeed you have your indicated speed and then you have your ground speed your true airspeed is how fast the airplane is going relative to the air that it's flying in if you wanted to calculate the actual miles per hour like how fast you're going and how much ground you're covering you focus on the ground speed because the ground speed tells you specifically how many miles per hour this airplane is going and again on this trip on full power we were seeing over 170 knots and right there I have the numbers on the screen for you so you know I'm not just speaking gibberish these are actual numbers okay pulling close to 200 miles per hour and we're burning less than 10 gallons of fuel per hour Upon getting to Big Bear, which again is this mountainous region, the airplane handled itself fine. Again, when you're flying in between mountains, you will get some bumps. And not for one second did I feel like I need somebody to take over or that I didn't have control of the airplane. So the airplane handled fine. But let's talk about the climb out out of Big Bear. When you have high density altitude or high elevation, your airplane tends to perform less. Climbing out of Big Bear, it was nothing to this airplane. No significant drop in performance, no significant drop in the climb out rate, and we were fully loaded. Again, this is where the true colors of that turbocharger in the Rotax 915 comes out. The fact that you have it readily available at any altitude. That turbo kicks in and we were climbing out just as fast as we would be climbing out in a low elevation field. And so I think this is where the TSI really shines. If you compare any other aircraft in the same class or the same category, you wouldn't have that luxury of the turbocharger. Now, if you did, you would be paying a lot more for that engine or for that aircraft. So yeah, our figures on the website are not nonsense, you know. If you look at that, we, we 155, we just in On the way back to Torrance, for a pilot who hates flying in the clouds, I think I did just fine, and the TSI handled itself just perfectly now I didn't talk much about the comfort level in the airplane that's because there's nothing to talk about it's a comfortable airplane visibility is great if you see me I'm constantly looking around and I had no problem uh, sighting traffic or seeing what's close to me As we touched down in Torrance, I was asking myself, how is it that more people don't know about this aircraft? When you think about it, who is this airplane for? If you're looking to get a Cessna 172, 182, a Vans RV10, or any other four-seater in the same category, you definitely want to take a look at the Sling TSI. In performance, economical, uh, the cost will depend on who's buying, obviously, but when you think of the complete package, I can't find any fault with this airplane. Yes, it is an experimental airplane, and when you look in that specific category, I think people tend to compromise with speed. 
Usually people go into experimental because they want more speed and they want to pay less for it. See, in aviation, every knot of speed you gain, you're burning two to three times more fuel. But with this airplane, you don't have to make that compromise. See, for me personally, when I'm looking at an airplane, I'm just not looking at how fast I can go. With an airplane like this, it's not slow, but it's not too fast either. It's just a well-balanced airplane all around. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of questions, so please leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer as much as possible. I'll also get the guys at the airplane factory to answer some of your questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, my name is Mike. If this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button for me. There's a lot more videos coming. And give that thumbs up if you truly enjoyed the video. Thanks, and I will catch you on the next video.